Welcome guys to this first video of our new series, Mad Scientists Explain, where we're gonna try to explain you some science and engineering be behind a single cylinder engine and how we use all of those knowledge to create the best possible 600cc two-stroke engine from Pentair. Let's go right here. We have a cut out of the PM09600 right here and simple as it can be. We have the piston going up and down, up and down. Now, that creates some vibration, some vertical force in the engine caused by the piston accelerating up and down. Let's suppose we have a CR500 engine going max RPM, 7,000, 8,000 RPM, whatever. We're gonna be having approximately 5,000 pound of force up when the piston reaccelerates at top dead center versus approximately 3,000 pound of force at bottom dead center when the piston starts going back up. Now, right there, let's stop. Why is the force not the same at top and the bottom? Well, that is due to the geometry of the crankshaft itself and the acceleration of the piston in, uh, in an engine. At top dead center, the force, which is equal to the acceleration or, or the acceleration times the mass of the piston, it's higher than bottom dead center. Why, why is that? So, it's really proper to the crankshaft mechanism itself. Now, the best way I can explain it is when the piston and, and everything goes to top dead center, the connected rod, everything is stretched out to the max, and the reacceleration down is really, really high. Where when we are at bottom dead center, there's some sort of a swing, a balancing effect, which really makes the piston reacceleration smoother than at, to at top dead center. So the force and the vibration is different. That's what we have here. What does it mean? It means that in a single cylinder, sadly, we cannot balance it perfectly. We have a difference of force. Now we're balancing it through a rotating crankshaft assembly. How do we do that? Let's go back to the crankshaft right here. We are voluntarily removing some material from the top part of the crankshaft. So the bottom part is heavier. So that rotating crankshaft creates a rotating vibration that counteracts the one from the piston itself. The rotating assembly, the vibration is constant. So all we can do is do a compromise between those two forces. So right here, we're gonna be talking about 4,000 pound of force, exactly the middle between those two forces, which means in the best case scenario, vertically, there's gonna be 500 pounds remaining up and down. There's nothing we can do about it because we have that constant down here. Now, big problem created by that is at nine o'clock and three o'clock horizontally, where the piston is not going, it's only staying vertical, that counterweight is generating 4,000 pounds of force left and right. And that's a huge vibration in your single cylinder. Now, that, that engine's been created in the 80s. Uh, everything was moving fast in development. Uh, they had much smaller CCs back then. They just created that big bore two-stroke. They didn't really think that much about vibration. All they could do in that case, without having a balancer shaft to help it out, is kind of compromising between the two. You'll hear people say, hey, I've, I've balanced my crankshaft properly to 50, 60% balancing effect. What it means is they're compromising between those two situations. Let's say we, we reduce the weight a little bit, put it 3,000 pounds of force right here. We're gonna be having a resultant of around 1,000 force up and down and 3,000 horizontal, which ends up an average of, what, 2,500, 2,200, something like that. And that's what you, what you gotta live with. It's the best case kind of scenario for that non-counterbalanced engine. Now, modern engine, we have integrated, like in the PM09, a counterbalancer shaft. What does that mean? Let's, let's have a look in the engine right here. So, right here in the middle, we have that balancer shaft, which rotates exactly at the same speed, but opposite for the crankshaft of the engine. Now, this, this shaft has 
some, some unbalanced weight to it as well. So it does generate some force and vibrations. How do we use that? Let's go to the drawing board right here. Those two shafts, since they rotate opposite to each other, they're going to help themselves up and down because they're going to be at the same position. But horizontally, they're going to be canceling each other out. So in the best case possible scenario, we're like, just like we wrote right here, we're going to be same force, 5,000, 3,000, and 4,000, which we're going to split between the two. They're going to be having 4,000 down, 4,000 up. And we're going to be resulting this, the best case scenario, 500 pound of force up and down resulting, but they're going to be cancel, canceling them out horizontally. So zero forces in three o'clock and nine o'clock. So that's, that's much better from going through the, to the 2,200 average we have here to an average of 500 up and down in zero, zero horizontally. So that, that in that case, we've improved, decreased the vibration from this case to this one about 75%. And that's why you're going to have that kind of balancer shaft in most modern engine, including our new PM09600 CC. Now it makes for a sm much smoother ride, no hands numbing, and, and you can ride even longer every day. So that's, that's the theory behind the counterbalancer shaft. I hope you've enjoyed that theory. Don't hesitate for any question. And we're going to see each other next week for the next episode.